This is the brand new and much improved fuel station from Bespeak, their autofill system. That's right, it's automatic. Let's take a look. It's worth pointing out that there are actually two versions of the exact same system. Technologically, they're the same. However, the casing does vary. So if you're in the US and you're using something like the VP racing system with the big wide neck, you would order the system for the big wide neck with the big hole. Whereas if you're in Spain or Europe or anywhere with the smaller type of can, well, you'd use the one with the smaller hole just so everything fits on perfectly. Both include the same USA made Grailer pump. Installation is super simple. In either case, we just take the lid off, place it over the neck and put the screw back on. Now, in the case of our standard European style, all our connections are in the lid itself. Whereas in our VP racing can, as they have a threaded insert in the top, the lid itself is our standard. And then we have our connections which screw into the lid itself like so. The case cleverly has cutouts on the sides which allow us to wrap some Velcro around the can if we chose to do so. And then it gives us a couple of options for our battery. So we can either wrap some more Velcro around the battery or if we choose to use a power box battery like in this one, it comes with holes pre-cut so we can attach our support. What makes this system so exciting though is the fact that it will actually fill your fuel tank and then stop once it's full completely on its own without the need for a load of programming or any manual input at the end to stop refueling. And it works both with rigid fuel tanks and with fuel bags. And it's even US compliant with current regulations which require pressure sensing inside, which is how it does all of that magic. Let's start off by being impatient. We don't want to learn the system, we just want to go fly. We want to get fuel from our Bowser into our fuel tank. Well, thankfully, you don't really need to get into the nitty gritty of how this works or why, it just works right out the box. First of all, we've got our screen with four buttons. Up and down, which are self-explanatory. A tick button, which is a sort of an okay, or if held down, takes us back a page. And then we've got two cogs here, which turn the system on, bring it out of sleep mode, and they also start pumping. It will stop pumping on its own, or if you hold it down, it will drain the tank as well. So let's start by turning it on. We get our V-Speak logo on the screen, and it tells us our battery voltage, how long before it goes back to sleep, and which model we're in. Now, yes, you can set up a model for each jet that you've got, or each model that you've got, each with their own very specific parameters. However, that is very much not necessary. All you really need is two models, one for a bag and one for a rigid tank. As long as you select the right one for your model, that's all you need in 99% of cases, unless you really want to get into changing parameters almost for the sake of it. Inside model one, we have three parameters. We have model select, self-explanatory, model parameters, and system settings. Now, we're already in Model 1, that's fine. We just want to go and make sure that it is set for a fuel bag as opposed to a fuel tank. So, in Model Parameters, OK. Model Name, we're not interested in changing that yet. We'll have a look at that in a moment in the video. And point number two is Fuel Tank Type, Fuel Bag. So, if it wasn't a fuel bag, we could just change that to Fuel Bottle. Two fuel bottles. But in this case, as it is a bag, we'll just take it back to fuel bag. Accept that. We can now go back and back again to our main home screen. Now that we know it's set for a bag, we can just tell it to fill. Now it will start by pulling out air up to a predefined time. But don't worry if it doesn't get all the air out, as it hasn't yet. Now it starts filling up. There's a small delay so it can calibrate the pressure that it takes to reach the bag, depending on your system, length of tubes, diameters of tubes, etc. And then once that has elapsed, it now starts filling up and will continue to do so until it reaches the predefined pressure. So we can see the pressure growing 
We've still got quite a bit of air in here, but not a problem. It's detected the maximum pressure and it now pulls out all that air until it detects that nothing but clear fuel is coming back. It then takes out any bubbles and then puts clear fuel back in following the same procedure as before. So calibrating for the length of tube and the pressure buildup and then once that's done it'll continue filling until it reaches that desired pressure. So in our case, right out the box, that's 40 millibar. So as soon as the tank reaches 40, we're gonna see it stops. It pulls a little bit back just to remove excess pressure from the bag. And then we get a nice picture of an airplane telling us that we're good to go fly. And we have a perfectly filled bag with really no manual input, with no air left inside. Perfect. And we can follow the same impatient principle for rigid fuel tanks as well. Basically, all we need to do here, just like before, is make sure that our system is set for a rigid tank this time, as opposed to a fuel bag. So again, in model parameters, fuel tank type, and we can just change that to a fuel bottle. And we'd be pretty much ready to go. There is one difference here though, compared to a fuel bag. Fuel bags, by their nature, build in pressure the more fuel and or air is inside of them, which is what this can read, the pressure. Now, rigid fuel tanks don't quite work the same, as obviously they have a breather tube, which allows some degree of the pressure to escape. That's why we need one of these reductor hoses. We can just connect that to our breather, and this just has a little nipple in here which reduces how much fuel or air can get through. Now we can either leave this off or we can connect it back into our fuel bowser. After all, we want to be environmentally friendly. So as soon as we start filling up, it'll fill as before. And when it reaches that restriction, well, it knows that it's full, just like with the fuel bag. Let's check it out. Now this time it can go straight in just like before, it's going to calibrate how much pressure it takes due to the system itself, so all the tubes, the clunk, the tank itself, and then it continues filling, measuring the relative pressure compared to that base level. Now, as soon as our fuel tank fills up, it's about halfway there now, once it fills all the way and the fuel reaches this reduction, that pressure is gonna skyrocket, it knows it's full, and we're done. We can see it's just about there now. Any second now, fuel's gonna come out of here and we can see the pressure grow and it's full. It then pulls back just a little bit to prevent any dribbling. And once again, we've got our airplane telling us that we're good to go fly away. Easy. And for either type of fuel tank, we can just empty it by holding it down. And once again, as soon as it's empty, it stops. Now, as promised, let's have a look at all the different parameters that are in here. If for any reason you did want to have a specific configuration for one or all of your models, as opposed to just having one setting for fuel bags and one setting for fuel tanks. So let's start off at the top, model select. Well, quite self-explanatory, you can have up to 20 models in here. Each can have their own different name and settings. Personally, I can't see the need for having more than just a bag and a tank, so that's what I'm going to be creating. So model one for me will be a bag, and model two will be a rigid tank. If we wanted to change, we just select it and go up or down accordingly. And then we can go back by holding it down. Model parameters. Now model name, let's change it from model one to fuel bag. So we just tick one, fuel bag, and just take that to the end, and we're done. So I'm now gonna use model number one as fuel bag for all models with a fuel bag in them. On to point number two, which is the fuel tank type. Now here we can choose between our fuel bag, which is already accurate for me, or we can change as before to a fuel bottle, so a rigid tank, 
or two fuel bottles. Now the reason why it differentiates here is that if you have two fuel tanks in a row, basically there's a difference in pressure between filling the first one and filling the second one. And to avoid false readings, what it does is when it fills the first one, it knows that suddenly that change of pressure isn't because the whole tank is full, it's because the first tank is full. It will then start filling the second tank and once that one is full and the pressure changes again, it knows that that second change of pressure is because the full entire tank is full and it can now stop filling. Number three, tank hose diameter. Now here we can choose between whether we're using six millimeter hose or four millimeter hose. Now, the only difference here really is as far as calculating how much fuel has been put in or been taken out. The whole pressure system works regardless of whether we have the right setting here or not. Number four, short, empty, and we have a time in seconds. This is the last step that the system does with a fuel bag. It basically just removes a little bit of fuel, in this case four seconds worth, so that once you remove or disconnect your filling line, it's not going to squirt absolutely everywhere. It also helps because it just removes a little bit of pressure from the bag, so it's not sitting there really, really taut. Now we can change this to any time we want. However, four seconds seems to work. Point five, maximum emptying. This just means that if you set it to empty the fuel bag or fuel tank, the maximum time it's gonna sit there running is for 600 seconds as standard, so 10 minutes. But again, you can change that up or down however you wish. Point six, flow emptying. This one isn't actually so much about how quickly we get fuel out of our tank, but controlling and knowing how much fuel we are taking out of the tank at any point in time, calibrating it basically. So what we would do here to make sure that our calibration is correct, so it shows us exactly how much fuel we've removed accurately, we would actually go to the previous point, max emptying, and we would reduce that down to 60 seconds. Then we would empty the fuel bag or fuel tank into an external jug or measuring device and press empty. Basically, we're then gonna have 60 seconds exactly put into that measuring jug and the amount in that measuring jug, you've got it, that is the amount that we need to put in here. Based off of that, all readings thereafter will be accurate. Point seven, eight, and 10 all kind of work together and they are actually relatively important. So we'll go over those in a moment, but for now we'll skip ahead to point nine. Point nine is delay control. This is just how long we give our pump and autofill system to stabilize before it starts taking pressure readings. So as standard, it comes set to 10 seconds, just so it can figure out what the pressure is of the tank, the tubes, the lines, the clunk, and everything else, before we start trying to detect when it increases in pressure in order to stop automatically. And on to number 10, we have our delta pressure. So basically this is once the system has stabilized from the previous point, once it goes up by this amount of millibar, it's gonna stop, it's gonna cut off because it knows that we've filled our tank because it's reached that maximum pressure. Now, we skipped seven, eight, and we said 10 is important because they work together, and that's right. Seven is the fill power. This isn't actually how quickly we're gonna fill our tank. This is a value that we need to make sure that the pressure that we're putting into the tank, so the speed of the pump, the pressure, is within a certain limit. The reason for that is because if it's way above that limit, or way below that limit, the readings of those 40 millibars up are not going to be accurate. So what we do is first of all, we go back to point 10 delta pressure and we increase that quite a lot. We would then go back to point seven, fill power, we have 55% pump as standard, and we would go back and basically start filling our bag. In the top corner of the pump, it's gonna read out the global pressure, not the stabilized pressure, but the global pressure. We need to make sure that's between 200 and 400 millibars. If it isn't, we need to increase or decrease that point seven from 55% to 60, 65 or 50, 
so that that is within that range. Once we can confirm that our pressure is within that two to 400 millibar range, we can then go down to our pump pressure and program into it what our pump pressure is. So as we've just seen in our little example, our pressure was 390. So we want to have this set to exactly that. Basically, this is the base reading that our pump is going to use. So it knows that normal pressure is 390. When it reaches half of that pressure, it knows that it's no longer sucking air and it's sucking fuel. And then once it's stabilized, it will then just go back to making our usual readings of 40 millibars. Now it is important to remember once we've finished doing this to go back to that delta and reduce the pressure needed to stop the cutoff back down to the standard 40. Continuing on with the menu, point 11 is the maximum fill time, 600 seconds. So if the bank or tank isn't full after 10 minutes, it will cut off automatically. Point 12 is bubble save. So as we saw when filling the bag, one of the last steps it does is pull out any leftover small bubbles. Now, how long it does that for is based on this time here as standard comes set to 10 seconds. And those are all the model parameters for filling fuel bags. The parameters for filling rigid tanks work in the same way, although there are a couple of those missing from the menu as they aren't necessary for rigid tanks, such as the bubble save, which obviously in an open air tank isn't an issue. On the other hand, if we've set it to fill two rigid fuel tanks, well, there are going to be a couple of extra menu items, basically duplicated menu items that we had before, which we now have twice, one for the first tank and one for the second tank. However, they work in exactly the same way. So as you can see, we now have fill power two and delta pressure two, both of those applying to the second fuel tank. And finally, in system settings, we have a low battery voltage cutoff, how long before it goes back into sleep mode, what pressure units we want to read out, be that millibars or PSI. An empty canister option is available. However, it comes set to default off, basically because if you have contaminants in your fuel, it can give you an erroneous reading. And if you really make a mess of it, you have a reset option, which will reset all the parameters in the autofill. And there you have it, the V-Speak autofill fuel system that really does live up to the name as it automatically fills, or more to the point, automatically stops filling as soon as you have a perfect tank of gas. I know this one is gonna be filling a lot of jets in the future, all of these, all of those and everything that has a fuel tank in it for me in the future. So make sure to check out the VSpeak website. We'll leave a link down below. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, leave us a like, subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you all in the next one, where if it's flying, it'll have been filled by this. <laughs>